Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Could be seated. First, I just want to thank uh, Father Marshall and Reverend Liz and Ava for inviting me to speak today. I'm very honored to be up here. So as someone who has grown up in New Jersey, I feel that every New Jersey parent should at some point take their kids to a boardwalk during the summer. And up until last summer, I had neglected that duty. I had never taken my children to a boardwalk almost 10 years with kids and no boardwalks. I was actually feeling pretty guilty about it. So one evening last summer, Niels was away on a business trip, and I made a last minute decision to take the kids to the Ocean City, New Jersey boardwalk. Now my kids had no concept of what a boardwalk was. So when I told them, I was met with much whining and complaining. <laughs> Does a boardwalk mean there's a lot of walking? Are we going to be bored the whole time? Why would anyone ever want to go on a bored walk? <laughs> well, they begrudgingly loaded into the minivan, and we began our trip. And guess what? They had fun. We had pickled pizza. Yes, that is a thing. We saw saltwater taffy being made at a candy factory. And of course, we had ice cream. And then just as we were about to play mini golf, it started raining. And I mean torrentially pouring buckets. I was so consumed in getting us to the boardwalk, I hadn't looked at the weather forecast. Through the downpour, we had to run from shop awning to shop awning, getting soaked along the way. And we finally made it bedraggled and dripping back to the car. It was a bit of an unfortunate ending to an otherwise enjoyable evening. But then what should appear on the drive home, and if you listen to the first reading, you know where this is going, a rainbow. It was amazing. I think the beauty of it made up for how soaked the rain made us. It was a full arc across the highway, one end to the other, each color distinctly clear. And even more, it was a double rainbow. So above the very clear rainbow, there was a fainter one, but the colors reversed. It happens when the light is refracted through the raindrops twice. You could not help but be in awe of the sight. And soon the minivan with the three kids turned chaotic. Mom, give me the phone. I need to take a picture. Let me do it. I have a better view. Mom, can I please get unbuckled? I can't see from here. I felt like the car was shaking with their energy. And I'm not helping the situation at all because we were driving through a rainbow. So actually, the ending of the evening was kind of perfect. And as the rainbow faded and the kids eventually began to fall asleep, I couldn't help but thinking about how seeing that natural phenomenon made me feel. I know exactly what a rainbow is scientifically. Light is passing through water, through the raindrops, and then being refracted or split into its colors and then reflected back out again. It's an optical illusion, really. And yet despite knowing that, there is still so much wonder in it. That awe has been present through millennia. 
The Norse believed in a rainbow bridge that bifrost that connected the realm of humans to the realm of gods. The Greeks and Romans believed in the goddess Iris, the goddess of the rainbow, who served as a messenger between God and humans. And here we are with our story in the Old Testament about God's promise to us. God imbues the rainbow with special significance. He says it is representative of his covenant with us. He tells Noah directly that seeing it is a reminder for him that he will not destroy us with water again. And so for us, it is a visual reminder of God's presence. And maybe that's why it's so magnificent. Here's your vocabulary word for the day. It's a theophany, a physical manifestation of God's presence. It is tangible to our senses. You can think of God appearing in the burning bush as another example, or our reading in the gospel for today, when God appears at Jesus' baptism and speaks. The heavens are torn apart, a dove descends, and God speaks his approval of Jesus. It's visual, auditory, a physical experience. There is something about the rainbow and these other instances when God communicates with us that is reassuring. God is making a connection with us. He is reaching out and saying he is here. And we want that reassurance. We look for signs and wonders because they comfort us and encourage us. We crave that connection with God. We know he is there and we can move forward with whatever path our life is taking. And yet a theophany is not a common occurrence. I would say it's rare, in fact. I haven't seen many true rainbows in my life and never liked the one I saw with my kids that evening. I've never heard a voice speak from heaven, never seen a burning bush. I want the voice of God to tell me what to do, to give me a sign like the rainbow, and yet often that isn't present. I think of Jesus in the gospel who has just heard the voice of his father, this auditory presence speaking his approval, and then when he first ventures out into the wilderness, Jesus is tempted and challenged, and there is no voice, no presence telling him he's doing a good job, no rainbow sign. It's just him and his problems in the desert, and that's hard. There's nothing tangible to hold on to. We struggle, we are challenged, we are tempted, and sometimes we feel like there's only us. I struggle with that sometimes, a lot of the time a feeling of absence, like I need the rainbow and I don't have it. It's not there. I need God to reach out to me and he doesn't. I was struggling with that I was, as I was looking over the readings for today. I'd like the voice of God to come from heaven and tell me what it's going, what's going on as it does in the Old Testament, or like in the gospel, tell me if I'm doing the right thing, but it's missing. Then as I read St. Peter's letter, a phrase, and then a word stood out to me and caused me to pause and sit for a while. Peter says, and baptism, which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter says that our baptism is an appeal to God not a cleansing, which I feel like I was always taught it was, but an appeal. I thought about that word appeal a lot. And what is an appeal but a prayer? Because isn't prayer an appeal to God? So by calling it an appeal, Peter is saying our baptism is our first prayer. And if this is true, then the connection to God, the bond doesn't have to start outside. It can come from within. We don't have to wait and search for God to speak to us because we can speak to him. We are given that capability at our baptism. It reminds me of the Wizard of Oz, speaking of rainbows. And this is going to make my kids smile when they're here because it's my favorite movie and they're inundated with it at our house. <laughs> but for most of the story, for those of you who know the story, Dorothy is looking for something outside of herself, somewhere over the rainbow, a way to escape her problems. Then she's looking for the wizard to help her get home, Ex external help. All of the characters are looking for something they think is outside themselves. And then what does the good witch tell Dorothy at the end? What do they all discover at the end? 
that they always possessed what they were looking for. They didn't have to look out there, it was in here. The rainbows are reassuring and wonderful because they remind us of God's presence. They make us pause our chaotic lives and say, wow, look at what God has created. Look, God is speaking to me. And yes, you specifically, did you know that no two people see the same rainbow? It has to do with the angle and position of, what you're, of where you're standing. I did a lot of rainbow research for this sermon. <laughs> but we don't have to wait for the rainbow. We don't have to always be searching for one because we can start that communication with God. We have the ability to establish, we have the ability to establish a connection with God. It has been inside us all along since we were baptized. The Holy Spirit that descended upon Jesus at his baptism, that same spirit descended on us at ours. The spirit that moved him forward in his journey and ministry, that same spirit moves us. If we're looking for a sign out there, if we're struggling with that feeling of absence, we can pause and remember that we can make an appeal to God. It takes awareness and courage to do so, but we have that ability. All it takes is a few words. God, I'm here. It's me, your child. I need to connect. Amen. <laughs>